to talk to you. Let's bring in my panel now. Adrian Elrod, a Democratic strategist and former senior aide on the Biden-Harris campaign. Also, Joe Walsh, former Republican congressman. Welcome to you both, guys. Appreciate it. Joe, let me just start with you on this one. I kind of want you to pick up a little bit on some of the conversation I was having with Hugo, and that is the complicated place in which Donald Trump finds himself in, right, now dealing with in particular, the special counsel heading up these DOJ probes along with launching his presidential bid for 2024. Yasmin, good to be with you. Look, Trump's going to be indicted, uh, and he deserves to be <clears throat> indicted, uh, probably for a few things. Um, politically, what that means is, sadly, I think his position in the party, in the Republican Party, will be strengthened. Once he's indicted, uh, his supporters, his followers are going to rally behind him. Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson, everybody's going to be screaming, deep state, deep state. And weirdly, Yasmin, that will strengthen Trump in, within the party, may strengthen his candidacy. Mm -hmm. But among the entire nation, it's going to make him just clearly more unelectable. So along, Adrian, with what is potentially to come in the Trump camp, right, this rough week that he's had in court, and then, of course, this kind of PR nightmare that we've been talking about the last couple of hours, and that is this conversation that he had, this dinner that he had with this notorious white supremacist along with Kanye West, now nor known as Ye. Um, the Democrats responding to this in a press release, the Democratic Party saying Trump isn't the only Republican spending time with Nick Fuentes. In 2021, Arizona Congressman Paul Gosar attended Fuentes' conference and even posed for a picture with him. Republican Congresswoman uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene attended this year's conference and spent her time glad handling, uh, glad handling with Fuentes on the main stage as Gosar also spoke to attendees. What do you make of this strategy, right, um, with the Democratic Party kind of pointing out beyond Trump the relationships that white supremacists have with folks like Paul Gosar, Marjorie Taylor Greene, the extremists of the Republican Party? Well, I think what the Democratic Party is doing here, Yasmin, is they are threading the needle and making it clear it's not just Donald Trump who feels like he needs white nationalists uh, to potentially get um, elected or, or become the Republican nominee for president. Um, it's, it's other people, too, in the party. It's, it's Marjorie Taylor Greene. It's Paul Gosar. Um, there are other members of Congress in the Senate who also align with white nationalists. And I think also what the Democratic Party is doing, the DNC is doing here, is sort of saying, hey, listen, some of you may think Donald Trump is over. Um, so we're going to focus on, you know, we don't know where he is, if, he, if he's going to be the nominee. You know, we don't know how, how weakened he is. But we're going to make it clear that this is not just about Trump anymore. This embrace of white nationalism goes well beyond Donald Trump, goes well into other yeah. leaders in the, in the Republican Party. So I think it's a smart strategy what, what they're doing, and they're not letting this be a one-day story. They're keeping it going, which is really important to educating the American people on what the Republican Party today really stands for. And, and Joe, you've been pretty outspoken about this um, as of late. You called out uh, Ben Shapiro, I believe, um, on Twitter, and you said, if you're going to criticize someone who, did not, who dined with a vile racist and anti-Semite, please call him out by name, say his name. Come on, man. And to your point, by the way, NBC has reporting with a lot of kind of unnamed sources calling out the former president, right? And then there, you've got some tepid responses more from the Sunday shows. But then you got someone like Chris Christie, who's been a lot more outspoken, especially since the midterms when it comes to um, Donald Trump and his viability for becoming the Republican nominee for 2024. Christie's saying this, this is just another example of an awful lack of judgment from Donald Trump, which combined with his past poor judgments make him an untenable general election candidate for the Republican Party in 2024. Is Christie the right type of Republican to be calling this out? What other voices need to be speaking up here, Joe? Somebody else, it's every other Republican leader. I mean, I my God, think about what we just learned last week. The former president of the United States had dinner with a black hating, Jew hating, Holocaust denying white supremacist. Now, is that a surprise? No, because that's who Trump is. But the problem is, Yasmin, Yasmin, Republican silence. Absolute Republican silence. Why are Republicans silent? Why is Ron DeSantis silent? Why is Mike Pence silent? Why is Ted Cruz silent? Because they know this is no longer fringe in my former political party. This is a sizable chunk of the Republican Party base, and they don't want to lose these people, so they're going to stay silent. This problem is so much bigger within the Republican Party than Donald Trump. 
Um, Adrian, let's pivot here if we can for a moment, because I kind of tease this, um, and, and we got to talk about it, which is, right, we know Donald Trump is running for 2024. What we don't know is whether or not current President Joe Biden is actually going to run, right? He said he's going to kind of table it, talk to his family over the holidays to make a true commitment as to whether or not he's going to be um, up there mm -hmm. running come 2024. My, my question is, do Democrats want him up there, right? Because he has had some major successes. Nobody can deny that legislatively within the Democratic Party and really kind of outperformed any expectations when it came to um, the midterm elections. Yeah, look, Yasmin, I think what the American people told us in the midterm election is more than anything, they want competent and effective government. It doesn't necessarily matter um, the age of the president. They want government to work again. And that's what Joe Biden has delivered for the American people, four major economic bills in just the first 20 months of his presidency. Uh, the first black woman on the Supreme Court. We could go on and on about the accomplishments that he has uh, delivered for the American people. That is what they are looking for. And look, you're seeing a lot of other potential contenders coming out and saying, hey, Joe, I'm with you. Gavin Newsom, most notably this weekend, Jonathan Martin had a story saying that on election night, Gavin Newsom made it very clear uh, he's with Joe Biden. He told the White House. Um, I think you'll see more and more potential candidates, whoever they may be. We haven't even heard a lot of names in the Democratic Party because Joe Biden has done such a good job putting their support behind him. Um, he's going to make his own decision with his family. He's made it very clear he's spending some time thinking about it over the holidays. But I mm. certainly hope is someone who's been active in Democratic politics for a long time that he does run for re-election because he's done such a great job. And I think he's the consensus builder that we need right now during these difficult times. Adrian Elrod, um, Joe Walsh, uh, thank you both. Appreciate it. I got to say, actually, quickly, I saw President Biden in Nantucket um, and he had this awesome selfie with these two young girls in front of him inside of a restaurant. It was probably the best selfie I've ever seen. Um, that's awesome. Anyways, that's an aside. <laughs> Search. <laughs>